So the purpose of this video is to discuss all the things that are involved in the pain response, particularly in response to functional abdominal pain. To also look at how it starts, how it's experienced, and through all this I'm going to introduce the term the gut-brain axis to help explain this a bit more. So I had said earlier that the digestive tract, which is made up predominantly of the stomach and intestines, was mostly a um, long tube or pipe, which is sort of true, but it's actually a bit more complicated than this. For example, these pipes have pumps and channels that secrete and absorb fluid and chemicals across it. They also contain glands that secrete hormones and other chemicals, which also includes serotonin, a major chemical that has effects both on the gut and the brain during their development and throughout someone's life. The gut also contains muscle within its walls that squeezes and relaxes to move things along. It finally houses a number of cells that protect us from infection as part of our immune system. Now, all of these functions of the digestive tract are controlled by the hundreds of millions of nerves of what is called the enteric nervous system, or the nervous system of the bowels or gut. All of these nerves are found within the walls of the stomach and intestine. They act just like the nervous cells that are found within your brain, and they act by sending messages to one another, as well as to the gut. We also know that they release similar chemicals, uh, as discussed, for example, with serotonin. Uh, what's also amazing is that they can actually run the intestines by themselves, which is often why the gut is called a second brain. In real life, however, the brain and gut talk to one another all the time through a two-way highway of nerves running along or beside the spinal cord, and the relationship between the two is often called the gut-brain axis. So now what I'm going to try and do is take you through this complex circuit using an example. When the intestine is stretched or squeezed, this is a potentially irritating stimulus or input that leads to activation of nerves when it reaches a th certain threshold, i.e. it gets to a certain point where it triggers the nerves. Well, these nerves then send the message to the brain through different paths. Now, these messages usually, usually will run through the spinal cord or along the spinal cord through different nerves. Once these messages arrive to the brain, they activate different regions or areas of your brain, which also talk to one another. For example, there are sensory areas, areas that sense things in the brain, that allow you to receive the message about where the pain is and how intense or severe it feels. This is often called perception, or uh, other, in other words, how you interpret the pain. But there are other messages that get sent to other parts of the brain, which act to influence or affect the experience, uh, overall experience of pain or the interpretation of this pain. For example, part of the stream of messages gets sent to the parts of the brain that uh, affect your thoughts or emotions or feelings associated with the pain, as well as the thoughts and or the cognitive experience that you get as well as the evaluation of the pain leading to increased attentiveness for pain or anticipation of pain. Additionally, other messages come into areas of the brain that are subcortical, which means are areas of brain that are in, are involved with things that we're not even conscious or aware of. And these regions are involved in not only the emotions and behaviors, uh, feelings that we get with the pain experience, but they also are involved in things such as long-term memory of pain and um, learning around the pain experience, as well as in, in, uh, association with the awareness or alertness that can that can come with this pain or the arousal, which is a really important part in 
uh, what we will talk about later is amplification of pain. And finally, uh, it can be associated with anxiety or fearfulness uh, that we learn with repeated episodes of pain. So it's easy to see the importance of all of these factors uh, or activation of all the other areas of the brain in addition to the simple projections of the nerves that just simply sense the pain. These all represent areas that can be affected uh, or altered in somebody who's got chronic pain. But if that wasn't complex enough, whenever the brain is stimulated, it triggers several responses through uh, different pathways involving nerves and hormones. One such pathway is known as the inhibitory pathway or the descending inhibitory pathway. And basically all this is is that when you get a lot of pain, you want to be able to shut that pain off after a while because you've got the message and you don't need any more pain. And so this is a very important uh, automatic response to help shut down the pain response after you sense pain. This also leads to the activation of nerves as part of what's the fancy name for the sympathetic nervous system, uh, which is a part of the nerves that actually regulate all the internal organs. And in any case, the, these nerves actually lead to crosstalk with the enteric nervous system or the gut nervous system to help control the functions of the gut. So we've now kind of completed a, a loop here where something's come in or, the, or sense it, sensed by the gut, leading to a lot of different connections that eventually leads to regulating the function of the gut or the motor activities of the gut. One of the other important brain responses is the release of cortisol from uh, the adrenal gland as a result of hormonal release in the pituitary gland within the brain. And this cortisol is important because it's a stress hormone and it can affect the gut and the immune system, which are both interrelated. And as you can see, these hormones and nerves that are activated have effects elsewhere in the body. For example, the sympathetic nervous system is part of your fight or flight response, which you may have heard of, which basically makes you have a very fast heart rate, fast breathing rate, makes you sweat, makes you divert blood flow from the intestine and the skin towards other organs and with respect to the cortisol this can alter your metabolism, your immune function in other parts of the body and all of these nerves and chemicals can actually then relay back to the brain and uh, alter the way that you process the pain. So everything is all interrelated. So while we see some fancy pictures that I've made here and a lot of arrows, I hope we can take some, some key messages from the whole complex brain-gut axis and why this can contribute to functional abdominal pain. You can have suffering or symptoms because of functional abdominal pain for various reasons. It can actually be due to the painful or annoying thing that's affecting your uh, intestines or digestive tract. It can be due to some of the responses that you get, both uh, alteration in the function of the gut itself or other organs as a result of the response. But another big thing, as you can see, that shapes your whole experience can be not only the perception of this pain, but the other things that are going on within the brain or in the um, brain stem or other uh, parts of the pain signaling pathway that can lead to uh, an altered attention, awareness, um, anxiety, uh, anticipation, regarding the pain, uh, and also all the things that actually go with the whole pain experience. I 
I hope this also explains why at the very core of functional pain, there's either a change in sensation, possibly function, for example, motility and, and immune uh, function within the gut or other parts of the body. And because of how complicated these circuits are, particularly because the gut and the brain talk to each other through various different ways, through nerves, hormones, and other chemicals, it's nearly impossible to say for certain then that solely one or the other is to blame in somebody who has chronic pain when this is set up uh, in an upregulated or upstaged manner. So focusing on one alone, i.e. either the brain or the gut, it's often not productive. So we need to look at and target the entire pain pathway and signaling from the sensors in the gut all the way to the subconscious and conscious parts of your brain. Thank you for listening.